Hi guys, welcome to my channel. This is Dawn from Frosty X Stitch. Um, I know it's not my usual day to film. It's Throw, throw Tuesday. I can't even say it. It doesn't matter. It's Pancake Tuesday. Um, that's the day before Ash Wednesday and because we're not in a Catholic part of Switzerland so that has no meaning to us. We don't have a bank holiday. We don't get time off. Um, the only meaning that it has to us is that it's the Wednesday before Basel Fasnacht and everybody knows when Basel Fasnacht's on so we don't need to know when Ash Wednesday is and if Ash Wednesday is going to be Valentine's Day and Valentine's Day is a non-day for me either as well so um, yeah so um, I'm just filming today because I have another meeting this evening but it's only a small meeting and Unfortunately, I have to go. I'm on holiday from work, but yeah, I'm not feeling too good. I'm feeling very down. I'm losing my stitching bug. I'm lonely. I'm bored. I I just yeah. So I decided to do it today, get it out of the way, and then I can basically just try and get on with my life. So, as you know, um, I usually have a list of things I want to talk about. It's, I'm not prepared. I'm just not prepared. I might show you my mug because um, I saw someone on Instagram with the same mug. It's from Danoon. It says Great Britain on there. And it has the flag again in there that you can't really see otherwise I'll drop my coffee. Um, I just wanted to show it because um, I just made a comment that I've got the same mug. She apparently acquired the mug when she was on a trip to the UK and she loves the mug. I've got most of this series. I've got the one with the Scottish flag. I've got the Welsh flag. Um, I've got the Scottish... Um, oh, yeah. Their animal on it. And the Welsh one as well. You might see them in upcoming floss tube videos. So anyway, coffee. Yeah, sorry for slurping. My video, don't care. So, yes, I'm, I'm totally not prepared, but I'll show you my stitching first. Now, um, I worked a bit on Evening Star. I don't think you've seen this for quite some time. So just that you know what, what I'm working on. I'm working on this bit, like up there. Done most of that bit, sort of here, up to there. And it's all confetti there. And yeah. It's half stitches and then full crosses and whatever. This is where I'm at. Um, I work it on this whenever I feel like it, I just pull it out, put a few stitches in. That's why you can't really see progress. But on most full coverage pieces you can't really see progress. Um, as I've noticed on my... Hang on, get that needle there. Good. Okay, so that's one of my projects. Um, I've been working on You've all seen this, of course. Um, Let this snow bungalow by um, Hands On Design, um, Kathy Haberman and Priscilla. They did this together, and I'm working at the border at the bottom. And for me, it's not. This, I, I prefer full coverage because I know where the stitches need to go. This is lots of counting and how much I've got to go up, and that's why it's taking me so long. But I know that when I get up to more into the, the building and the snowmen, it'll go faster. And me and Shelley from Shelley's KX Stitch, we um, created a Facebook group um, for Stitch Along for Let It Snow Bungalow. But we've opened it up to any chalk piece, basically, and any winter or snow piece if you want to join in in our group. It's um, a closed group, you have to answer a few questions, it's just because we want to know if you're really stitchers. That's the only thing that's going on. 
I'll quickly insert a picture here of what the group looks like. So I think you'll, you'll find the floss tube group if you're interested because we just couldn't find a hashtag that would work for us and going through Instagram is usually quite tedious going through all the stuff that you want to look at from different people and then you have to go and search for a hashtag as well it just takes too much time so we decided to do a Facebook group and it's me and Shelly Kay Stitch and a few people have joined some of them have started stitching others are just still kidding up others are just watching that's fine it's fine by us um, anyone can join you just have to be a stitcher that's the only requirement that we have now I've been I've sort of pulled out my head that I haven't been working on for quite some time so this is what it should look like um, hashtag black and white printers are still a thing so um, this should be blue and violet and sparkly and yeah never mind because I'll show you where I am at I'm still haven't I still haven't got a page finish and you might be able to see how confetti heavy that this is and this is the background and I'm I'm losing my interest in it because this is where I am in my page as you can see I haven't even got a page not even half a page and I'm doing it um, 2 over 1 on 18 count ADA it's suggested to do 2 over 1 on 18 count ADA and I'm doing full crosses and it's taking me ages and I mean I have done quite a lot already so to rip this all out I don't think I can do that myself I just can't it's it's taken me weeks to get as far as this and then I thought well maybe I'll just take it out and do tent stitch from now on but it doesn't work because I've already done full crosses you can't then just change so I don't know what to do I really don't know shall I go on shall I rip it out because doing half crosses would be faster Doing full crosses is doing my head in. Um, I actually like doing full crosses because the coverage is really, really good. It does. Um, I don't think that one strand over one would work. I don't think it would look as good. It. I took. Um, I used anchor black, just because everybody said anchor black is covers better. But I can't. I didn't really see a difference because one of these strands that I used was actually DMC black and it has absolutely no difference in it so I just don't know should I go on should I stop because I worked on this yesterday two hours and I can't even see a difference so yeah it's I don't know I've got a few other heads that I wanted to stitch sometime but if I'm already losing my patience on my first head on my first page I don't know how that's going to end I really don't know anyway happier things <laughs> yes I actually have happier things to tell I'm not only only doom and gloom um, I've got a fully finished object there now this was the tattoo that my friend has on his arm it's only about this size and I know that I could have probably had the artist give me his whatever he worked from but I didn't want to do that I took a picture of the arm of my friend and I just basically tried to convert it into a cross stitch pattern and it was actually it was very difficult when I started it you know to work out but I had like on one side I had had what, what it looks like in a reel and then my pattern and then what I tried to do out of it so it was actually not that bad but then on top it was getting more difficult because it didn't line up anymore and there was lots of fudging but now that I've actually put it on a canvas yeah I've stuck it on a canvas um, I actually like it I really like it and 
I was meant to send it, send it to him, but he hasn't given me his address yet because he doesn't work with me anymore. He works um, still for the same company, but somewhere else. So I need his real address to send it to him, which he hasn't done yet. That's why I've still got it. And I don't mind because I keep this. I really don't mind. I keep it because there was lots of work that gone in, that's gone into this. Um, and it gave me some stitch from stash credit, so that was good. I also have another finish. I'll show you this here. This is a Coloris pattern, a free pattern that I got with my threads. And I stitched this up in a few days and finished it by um, using a painter's canvas that I just um, painted the outside that you can see here now very well. I just painted an outside border in red and in the middle I left it white. Um, you can only see it when the light is really on it, that's why I took this shot. And I then just frayed the edges and stuck it on with sticky tape, double sided sticky tape. And I can't show it because it's been sent as a gift to somebody already. Okay, so that's the stitchy part of my floss tube. Um, in the second part, now, if you're not interested, just goodbye. See you next time. But I'm going to talk a bit about Basel Fasnacht because that's, let's say, the drei schönste Tag, which means the three best days of the year. Basler Fasnacht for every Basler. And I attended Basler Fasnacht from the age of zero. My, um, we were living in St. Gallen and my dad is a Basler and he took me in this carrier thing for my first Fasnacht. I was still a baby. Um, he insisted on it to my mum. He said it is Basler tradition. You have to go to but you have to go to Fasnacht. If you participate or if you're a viewer, you have to go to Basler Fasnacht. And from then on, I did not miss one Fasnacht until I went to study in um, Scot Scotland. I went to Edinburgh for a year to university and I missed it. But I woke up at four o'clock Basel time. That's when it starts, Monday morning, four o'clock a.m. I woke up in Scotland and I knew that now it starts and I'm missing out and my heart hurt. It really hurt. Um, Basel Fasnacht is really important. Um, I have a blog out there. Um, I haven't got it on me because it's on my um, coat. You you buy a blog out there. It's, you can have um, a copper, a silver or a golden one. And it's got a sachet on it for the whole of Fasnacht. Um, and I have it on my coat because um, that's your sort of entry ticket. Um, so you can get in cheap because it's eight francs, I think. That's about eight dollars for the cheapest one. And it's about forty dollars for the golden one. So it depends how much you want to pay. Um, but because the whole city is involved, basically it's a hundred meters from where I live in like that direction. And another hundred meters that direction is where Fasnacht. And from there on into town is Fasnacht. So they can't have entry points where you have to pay. So if you go, you have a blog out there. You have to have it on you because um, the walkies that come in the afternoon, they would put rapley, which is the, I think you throw that at, at weddings, this paper stuff. And in Basel we call it rapley, it's not confetti. Um, they would stuff you, they would stuff it down your back if you didn't have a blog out there. Um, when my dad was a young boy, he used to get, they used to catch him and then they would actually put crow's feet in with the confetti. So it would scratch my dad's back up because crow's feet are, are really, they're really ugly. Now they're not allowed to do it anymore, but they have other things they do. And if if they get um, a good looking woman, they, they'll take her up onto the wagon and they'll stuff you. And if you're lucky, you'll get flowers afterwards. They hand out candy for the kids. They um, throw oranges. Um, but basically, Fasnacht is so much more. Basler Fasnacht is... You might know that we have these rituals in in Europe, most of Europe. Um, 
it's to sort of get rid of the winter is the our whole idea about this thing Fasnacht and in Germany it's called Carnival in Switzerland they call it Fasnacht, Fasching, Carnival, whatever but there it really is they have it in restaurants and not a lot is going on outside do we do have some that go outside and, and that was I think where Heidi Klum had an accident with her husband on, where they were on a wagon and I think they drove over a kid or something that happened a few years back but that has only a faint hint to do with Basel Fasnacht. Basel Fasnacht is something completely different, it's completely special um, it's only three days mm. that is due to Napoleon we have um, a hotel called Hotel Dreikönig, the Three Kings it's the oldest registered hotel that has been that is still open and still running in history in Europe and it's on River Rhine and Napoleon stayed there and we had Nara Freiheit. Now Nara a Nar is, is a fool or somebody who plays tricks on others like um, you would have them in, in the kings would have them for entertainment so we would have Nara Freiheit so you would be free to play tricks on other people and be the fool and do that all year round and then Napoleon came with his troops and whatever and he said look you're allowed to have Nora Freiheit but only three days three days that's it so that's why we start Monday morning 4 a.m. and we go till Thursday morning 4 a.m. and then it, it starts and it stops and that's it of course we have the Latana EP phase when um, the bigger groups they have lanterns that are really big and they have to get moved to where you start Monday morning so on the Sunday before the, only the pipers you have piccolos they will pipe along to take the lantern from there where, where it was made to there where we start on Monday morning um, lots of people go to Kienbase which is something completely different and special, that's in Lierschel, just outside of Basel um, where it's got to do with fire I might show that in my next floss tube, I don't know yet um, it's worth coming to see the whole thing that goes on because we have Fasnacht in all the little outskirts of Basel um, but that is, let's say it's just different so we have three days of Basel Fasnacht and we really stop at 4 o'clock Thursday morning we stop and the cleaners are standing there and I start cleaning up everything because I mean we have Rappli all over the floor we have everything is all over the floor trash everything you just leave it and they come and clean it because the first tram goes at 5 o'clock or 5.30 in the morning so it has to be clear by then and when you go to work on Thursday morning and you go to work, let's say, 6 o'clock in the morning, you will see no hint of Fasnacht. Before, it was three days of you can't get through town, trams don't drive through town, you have to walk, it's dirty, you have all these masks, and they're called larfe, not masks, larfe. Um, people dressed up, and it's basically a madhouse in a whole city and then Thursday morning 4 o'clock it's finished that's it and I'm going to try and show you a bit I'm showing you some pictures and I narrate a bit but that's just a tiny bit of what Fasla Fasnacht is and I would recommend anybody who is interested in culture or whatever you can ask me questions I'll answer them um, I love Fasla Fasnacht and due to my anxiety and being not being able to get out of my flat by myself and without a car um, I hear it I hear it when I open my windows I hear it when my windows are closed and I'm not a part of it anymore and I haven't been able to go for years 
I used to get up four o'clock in the morning and watch it on TV. Just the first, just the, the waiting for four o'clock because you get up at about 2.30, you get up and you get dressed and you put on your costume and you have to dress up warm because you're tired and it's cold and it might even snow. And you go into town and everybody's walking into town and everybody's dressed up and everybody just on Sunday evening you, you can feel this excitement it's it's a whole of the town it's it's sort of I don't know it's it's you know something's going to happen something's going to it just gives me goosebumps even now and you go into town and it's it's dark but the lights are still on like street lights are on and trams and buses just go to the outskirts of it and then you have to walk the rest and um, for my group, I had to walk like straight through town and it would take me half an hour to get to where I need to go. And um, then about 10 to 4, you start getting ready, you know, meeting the others, setting up. I used to walk in front with a, a lantern on a stick and a lantern on, on my head. And it's about 5 minutes to 4, you get ready, you take your your laugher down and then you just wait and the clock this big clock and all of the main people they they know it's going to be and I say 30 seconds guys and then you have to be ready and then you're just standing there and you can't really see out but you can see people all over waiting for it to start people in costumes that are going to participate people just standing on the sidelines and People who take cameras and take photos with, with flashlights will kill them because you can't see out and if they flash into your eyes you can't see. So don't do that. Don't use flashes in the morning. You just don't do it. So the lights go off in a whole of town four o'clock in the morning. All street lights. Um, if you have a shop that has a shop window, the light has to be off. If it's not off you'll get a fine. Some people even smash them in to turn off the lights. Um, we're strict. We're really strict. It has to be off and then it's dark and only the lanterns and we all play the, the, the same march and it's called Morgenstreich because Morgenstreich is the beginning of Fasnacht. And every single clique, uh, that means every single group, plays the Morgenstreich four o'clock in the morning. And it says Morgenstreich, Vorwärts, Marsch, and it starts. And the feeling is, you can't describe it. And I found a group that was really good for me because I could come and go when I like. And that's what I needed. And they were really good. And it's just a shame that I can't take part anymore. And like I said, I used to get up and watch just the beginning of, of Fasnacht, Morgenstreich. And we have Schnitzelbank where they, they they can be very political, but they're like jokes, but a bit different. And some of them are really, 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 really good. And you have all these places where you would go and, and um, try your piccolo. You know, you, you have to train your piccolo and your drumming and for fast not. And you used to you do that in your club place and they would open up at Fasnacht. So you can go in there and you can have a Mahlsuppe, which is a soup based on flour. Um, sounds awful, but is absolutely, it's the best thing to have at five o'clock in the morning. Um, and then you have flans, like um, cheese flan and, and onion flan. And you drink white wine. So you would march along, four o'clock, march along. I would have a, a bottle of white wine in one of my pockets of my costume and about another one there. I would have um, my own beaker. It's it's small, it's um, made out of silver, hanging around my neck. And I would have plastic ones in there where the drumsticks go in, in my costume, because I don't drum. So um, the first stop would then be Lohnhof. So I stopped there, because I'm the one who says where we go along. So I stopped there. And then I would get out the white wine and we all drink white wine, four o'clock in the morning. That's what we do. And basically there's so many drunk. And we used to just drink white wine and maybe a Wokis, which is um, white wine with mineral water or, but 
we didn't really drink beer or cocktails or anything. But now all the young people, they want their cocktails, they want the beer, they stay up all night until Magerstreich and it's not quite the same. But yeah, now I've talked about it a lot. I could talk about Fasnacht for ages, but I'm going to insert a few pictures. They're not my pictures because I can't find my pictures. I'm really sorry about that. I have none of the music. I might um, film some, maybe next week, if I get round to it. I don't know if I can or if I want to because it's it's really stressing me that I can't take part. But So there's no music, but I comment on what you can see and of course that's not even half of what, what Fasnacht is. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy it and that's it from me. So happy stitching and happy Basel Fasnacht to everybody who can take part or just comes and watches or sees it on TV or whatever. Enjoy yourselves and I'll try and be in a better mood next time. I can't go, I can't guarantee it because my life just isn't happy at the moment. It's just not. So Happy stitching everybody and thank you for all the comments. Thank you for being stitchy friends because you're saving my life by being stitchy friends. And even just a like or a view, you don't even have to leave a comment. Just watch or don't watch. But if you watch other floss tubers that's fine. If you post in Stitch Mania or any of the other groups I'm in, I like seeing your pictures so just do that. Happy stitching. Bye. Okay, here are a few pictures from Fasnacht. This of course is not from this year. Um, all of these pictures are not from this year because it hasn't happened yet. This is Morgenstreich when all the lights go off and the lanterns are on and it's really, it's so beautiful. The whole of town is there. It's so many people, it's so special. We have big lanterns that you can see and small lanterns in all sh shapes and sizes and it's just great and these are in a small um, little streets in the morning they seem quite tired this is what happens when you take a break you put your drum down and put your laugh on top in the afternoon you have the big walkies they come on wagons they give out sweets um, oranges flowers you have drummers as you can see here um, every group dresses up in a different sushi which is a theme as you can see, these are pipers with piccolo. So you have piccolo and drums that are going on. We have Goku music, which is basically <laughs> anything. And you have one in front who directs the others. Here you can see some. They have um, trumpets, they have drums, everything. Another Wakis. Wakis is another term for Elsasso which are the French just living over the border from us and have huge noses. And this is Rappley, not confetti, it's Rappley. Um, it's the paper that you throw out. And as you can see, the whole town is on their feet. This is in the middle of the city. And yes, on the lanterns, we are very political. We have political themes that we use at Fasnacht. So I just picked two that are actually from this year. So. You shouldn't actually see them yet. And this is at the end of Fasnacht, which is 4 o'clock Thursday morning.